What's up guys, my name is Brandon and by now, you've probably already unboxed your brand new iPhone 11 and you've probably already gone through the initial setup process by watching my setup video, but now you may be going through some of these settings and just playing around with your phone, trying to explore and figure out what you should change next. And that's exactly why I wanted to make this video to show you the first things you should do, the first settings you should change, the first features you should get familiar with and more on your brand new iPhone 11. Now this video will be especially beneficial if you're coming from an iPhone 8 or earlier Earlier, but of course this will also apply to those who upgraded from just last year's iPhone XS or iPhone XR. All right, so let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and get into the tips. Now the first thing to do is get familiar with the gesture controls and the new haptic touch in iOS 13. Now this is going to be super important for those of you who came from a pre iPhone 10 device, a device with a home button, because you're going to need to know how to navigate around the OS. So you're going to need to do a lot of practicing with the gestures here. Now, if you have an iPhone 10 or above, every is going to be the same except there are new haptic touch actions in iOS 13. Now I'm not going to go through every single gesture because I did make a separate video on that and I will leave that link down in the description below but some of the basic ones are just swiping up to go home and you can swipe between apps by simply swiping on the bottom bar right there very easily and of course your control center is up in the top right right there that's how you can get to your quick controls and you can get to the notification center by swiping down from the middle right there from the notch and again if you want to see all of the gestures I will have that video linked down in the description below. Now haptic touch is also something to get used to here in iOS 13. That is just what basically 3D touch was in the past, but it's now haptic touch here in iOS 13. If we go into our settings, go to accessibility, go down to touch, you will see haptic touch right here. And this is where you can actually change the settings for haptic touch. So you have fast and you have slow. So in the past, this section right here would actually be 3D touch, not just haptic touch, unless you did have an iPhone 10 R, but you can see here, you could change the duration. You could do a little test right here to see when the peak and pop is you can have it either fast or slow I would definitely recommend you have it on fast and this is going to be how you can do quick actions on applications so you can see there just a quick way to send a new message or for instance for Twitter if I wanted to compose a tweet or scan a QR code I could do that very quickly just from the menu right here haptic touch is also super handy in applications you could just long press on photos or links or anything to get additional options so definitely take advantage of haptic touch in iOS 13 now the next thing you guys want to do on your brand new iPhone 11 is to enable the all new dark mode and also configure your display settings. So if we go into our settings, go to display and brightness, you are going to spend a little bit of time in here. So we have dark mode right there. If we toggle that on, you can see that is what dark mode looks like. And there's an option right below that called automatic. And that is definitely a feature I would turn on. I would definitely toggle on automatic so that your phone is in light mode like you see right now. And then when the sun goes down, it turns to a dark mode to be easier on your eyes. And honestly, most of the applications in iOS look better in a dark mode anyways but if you go to the options right here you don't just have to do sunset to sunrise you can set a custom schedule for when you want the light appearance to show up and when you want the dark appearance to show up but I personally just like to keep it at the default light until sunset now true tone is a feature that you could turn off or on it depends on your taste if you turn it off it is going to be more of a blue screen if you turn true tone on it's gonna be more of a yellow more of a real tone to the screen it just depends on your own personal preference there now auto lock is another one I would definitely turn either off or for or five minutes I would not have this on 30 seconds one minute two minutes or three minutes just because you could be reading an article and then all of a sudden your phone dims down and then it turns off when you're in the middle of reading something then it uses up more battery life just to turn your phone back on and get back to where you were so I would turn that on four five or never I personally keep all of my phones always on never just because I never forget to lock my device so it's never gonna be an issue for me and raise to wake is another one I would disable all that is is basically when you raise your phone up like that it turns the screen on that could kill battery life and and not every time you want to actually unlock your phone when you you know pull your screen up like that so I would turn race to wake off as well and then the last one I want to talk about is auto brightness if we go to accessibility display and text size and then go all the way to the bottom you can see auto brightness there you could turn that on or off it's just personal preference I like to keep mine off just because I could control my brightness whenever I want to just from the control center right up here in the top right I could just change it to whatever I would like the next thing you guys want to do is set up face ID if you didn't do this initially and then also configure the settings inside of your settings application so you can see here face ID and passcode you will have to put in your passcode and then you can see you get the options right here you also have the option to set an alternate appearance so if you want a spouse to be able to get into your phone or if you you know wear glasses or something like that or a lot of makeup you could set up an alternate appearance in there that way two different faces can get into your phone and I would also make sure that all of these right here are 
are checked off, especially password autofill. This is basically just when you're inside of Safari and you get asked for your password, it would just scan your face and autofill in your passcode, which is extremely convenient. Require attention for face ID is another one I would definitely recommend. That way you actually have to be looking at the camera sensor right here to unlock your device. That way somebody can't just put your phone up to your face while you're sleeping and unlock your phone. And then there are some other options down here to take a look at. I just keep all of these enabled just because I like to be able to do things from my lock screen. The next thing you guys should absolutely do is watch my battery saving video. So you're gonna want to get off to a good start on your iPhone 11's battery life, you want this battery health right here to stay at 100%. And if you want that to happen, you need to watch my battery saving tips video for iOS 13. All of those will apply to the iPhone 11 as well. You can basically see what's using all of your battery right there. You also have screen time, which will show you which applications are sending you the most notifications, your daily average for pickups, like when you pick up your phone, what applications do you go to, and just a lot of data you could take in here in both screen time and the battery settings. You should also go into privacy location services and take a look and make sure that a lot of things aren't using your location. And if they are, just monitor that. You may want to have it to never or just while using the application. Just keep an eye on this section here in your settings. Another tip I can give you guys is to not always use a fast charger or a wireless charger. Use them sometimes, but don't use it every time you charge your phone. It is going to wear down that lithium ion battery in your iPhone 11. Now, the next thing you guys should do is test out the brand new camera on the iPhone 11. So we have that dual camera right now with really awesome features built in to the camera application. So you can see here, if you tap on that one, it takes it to 0.5 and gives you a more wide look. So it's a super wide angle lens and it makes you seem like you're further back than you are. So that's really cool that you could do that. You can also use this to zoom in or zoom out. And then you have this little arrow on top. If you tap on that, you get some additional options down here for like your flash, for your live photos. If you want to set a timer, you could tap all those, tap the arrow again, and it takes you to where you could choose photo video selfie portrait now if you're coming from an iPhone 10r portrait mode in the iPhone 11 now allows you to take portrait photos of objects not just people so that is another thing to note now we also have slow-mo selfie so if you turn around to the front facing camera by pressing that there and then go over to video and then over one more to slow-mo you can see here you could record a what's called a slow fee it's a slow-mo video so that's actually a trademarked word from Apple but you can see here this is actually gonna be in slow-mo now when I play it back so it looks really weird because I was just literally talking to a microphone but you can see there those are called slow fees brand new in the iPhone 11 so yeah just spend some time playing around with the camera it is a really awesome camera that I think you guys are going to love the next thing you guys should do is set up Apple pay so if you go into settings go to wallet and Apple pay this is where you should go to set up your Apple pay settings so that you can make really easy payments when you're in stores I almost never have to pull my wallet out anymore these days I just use Apple pay on either my Apple watch or on my iPhone makes payments super super simple and plus if you apply for the Apple card you do get cash back as well so I would definitely go ahead and set that up and set your default card as well and also once you set up Apple pay you could just double tap on the side button right here to pull up your cards very quickly the next thing you guys should do is either create or modify your me emoji so if you haven't made a me emoji yet go into your messages go to any text message in here tap on the emoji button and then go all the way over to the left and you will see these right here click those three little dots right there then you will see your me emoji right here on this little plus icon right there so if you tap on that it will take you to the create your Memoji screen. And from here, you can click on get started and you can customize your Memoji to your liking. Now with the iPhone 11 and iOS 13, there are a ton more options to customize your Memoji. So especially if you're a girl, there are a ton of different things you could do. Jewelry, tattoos, piercings, all kinds of things are new here with the iPhone 11 and iOS 13. So I just created the ugliest Memoji of all time, but I'm just doing this to show you an example of how it's done. Now, once you have your Memoji in here, you can also send these to people like in a chat like that uh, you could do it on social media and things like that as well it's just going to be down in your keyboard you could also use them as stickers so if you just drag you could put it as a sticker inside of a thread you could just have a lot of fun with the emojis here on the iPhone 11 and iOS 13 so I definitely recommend you at least give it a try and also while you're in FaceTime you can have your face as your emoji and you can also do it with an emojis as well like animals and things like that so that is also another reason to add your emoji now the next thing you guys should do is install 
applications and customize your home screen. So this should be an obvious one, but a lot of people just spend too much time going around messing with things and they don't install all the applications they need. So just go ahead and install all your social media apps. Definitely check out Arcade. So if you go into the app store right here and go to the Arcade tab down at the bottom, if you are into gaming at all on your device, I would definitely go ahead and give Apple Arcade a try. Now this is a $5 a month service, but you do get your first month free. You don't have to pay anything and then you can go ahead and cancel your subscription, which by the way, to cancel your subscription, you just go to settings, go to your iCloud account and then go to subscriptions right here. So yeah, go into the app store, explore around a little bit, go to the apps tab, go to the games tab. You can see there's some 13 great apps for iOS 13 popular apps. You can also see the top apps. If you keep going down top free apps right there, just go ahead and download some applications. And if you want to customize your screen and move multiple apps at a time, it's made really easy in iOS 13. If you tap and hold to use haptic touch, you can see there, there's now an option called rearrange apps. If you tap on that, it allows you to move your applications around or delete them. Now, if you want to move multiple applications at a time, you can also do that by simply dragging on one and then tapping on another, just like so. If you don't want to put them in a folder, just keep tapping, keep tapping, and you can move them to a new page, or you could just have them wherever you want. If you just want to move them on the same page to a different location, you could do that very easily. So that is a quick and easy way to customize your home screen here on the iPhone 11. Just tap done up there in the top right, and then you are back to normal. Now, the next thing you guys should do is customize your control center. So the control center is when you swipe down from the top right, right here. These toggles are actually customizable. So you can see right there, first of all, I have the dark mode toggle right there. So if I press that, it turns my phone into dark mode, press it again, it turns it back to light mode. You can also do that by haptic pressing on the brightness toggle right here. You can see dark mode down there in the bottom left hand corner. So if you go into our settings, control center, customize controls down here is where you have your different controls that you can add to your control center. You can also move around the order if you want. So some of the ones I recommend are low power mode, screen recording, text size, hearing. And if you have an Apple TV, I would add Apple TV remote. If you have a lot of things in home kit, I would at home, but these are the ones I like the most. And then you can see here when we swipe down on the control center, you can see there we have all those toggles. Now also inside the control center, you can lock your screen. So rotation lock, if you don't want it, you know, flipping over on you, you could do that. And also if you haptic press right here on this platter right here, you can actually change your Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth connection straight from within here without having to go into settings. So if you just haptic press, long press there on Wi-Fi. You can see we could change our Wi-Fi network. Same with the Bluetooth, if we haptic press on that, which by the way, guys, when I say haptic press, that's really just a long press. And same with AirDrop right here. If you haptic press on AirDrop, you could change that to contacts only, off, or everyone. And there's just a lot of cool things you could do from the control center very easily. That's also where you see your battery percentage. So definitely go ahead and customize your control center. You will definitely be using that a lot. You can also use it from the lock screen as well. All right, so the next thing is going to be buy a case. I cannot stress this enough, buy a case case, but not only a case, buy a screen protector as well. Protect that investment. You don't want the beautiful back of your iPhone 11 to get cracked or damaged or scratched. Same with the screen. You don't want that screen getting scratched up. So I would definitely recommend getting both a screen protector and a case. At the bare minimum, get a case. And I have a few iPhone 11 cases that I recommend that I've been using throughout the day. Now, the first one's going to be from Spec. Spec has always been one of my go-to case manufacturers for iPhones for years now. So Spec makes some great cases for the iPhone 11. You can see here they have that design right there they have this design right here they also have a clear one so if you want to be able to see the actual color of your iphone you can get that and it stays clear guaranteed it says also every single one of their cases are drop tested so if you do drop it it's not going to actually hit the screen it has a little bumper here uh, it's not very big it's not like bulky or anything but it will definitely prevent it from cracking the screen when it does drop which is always a nice benefit of having a case caseology is another great case manufacturer that makes some really awesome high quality cases for the iphone 11 you can see this one right here slides in really easily. It also is drop protected. So you have the little bumpers on the side to make sure it doesn't crack your screen. And it also looks nice and clean, very lightweight as well. Just a really cool design here. It's very different, very unique. And you can see the cutout for the camera is just perfect. You can see they do also have a nice collection of different cases. This is another clear one that actually looks really good because of the accents on the edges. Rhino Shield, of course, is always one of my favorite case manufacturers. They also make really good screen protectors. So if you need a screen protector, Rhino Shield is always the number one brand that I recommend recommend. They have both a back protection and a screen protector right here to protect both the front and back of your phone. So if you need a 
this screen protector, definitely go ahead and head over to Rhino Shield's website. Again, I'll have links for all of these things down in the description below. Nomad is another brand that makes really awesome cases with a microfiber interior. I really like the microfiber on the inside of their cases. Really well packaged, you can see here. Very nice experience when unboxing these cases. And you put the case in, it fits extremely well. Feels super good in the hand, perfect cutout for the cameras right there. And again, I always like having that peace of mind knowing that my phone, the back of my phone is not getting scratched because it's microfiber on the inside. So they make a lot of really cool leather cases. You can see here, they have folio cases as well. Just a good selection over there at Nomad. And I should also mention that one of my favorite things about Nomad is how easy it is to get the phone out of their cases. There's some cases out there where it's extremely hard to get your phone out. And I just hate that. I don't know about you, but I hate it. But with this, it's super easy to get out, super easy to get on, and it protects your phone. And then we have some very minimal cases here from Totally. Totally is the king of super minimal, super lightweight cases. These are not cases that are going to protect your phone at all. They're just very slim, very lightweight. For example, I have this black one right here. You can see I put it on. Very simple. It's a very, very sleek case. This doesn't even do it justice, but it's not going to protect you from drops, but it is very, uh, very good case to protect from scratches. And if you don't think you're going to drop your phone, this is definitely the most minimal, lightest case I think I've ever used. And then I just want to give you a quick look at this case from Pitaka here. The back has a really cool design. It kind of reminds me of carbon fiber. And you can see that's what it looks like when you put it on. It is pretty easy to get on, but this is a case that's very tough to get off, but it does look really good on the phone. It's very slim profile. It's not going to protect you from drops, but it looks good. And you can see the bottom's fully exposed there as well. But again, you don't want to drop your phone when you have this case on. And if you guys want more details on the best iPhone 11, 11 Pro, and 11 Pro Max cases, I will have a video coming out very soon. Possibly by the time you're watching this, it's already out. So check the description for my video on the best iPhone 11 cases. All right, so the next thing you guys should do is explore Siri shortcuts. So this is something that's going to be installed on your device once you get it. And it's right here. It says shortcuts. Also, if you want to search for something, you could just go down, swipe down like this and start searching for shortcuts and you will see it right there. Yeah. Go ahead and tap on that. Siri shortcuts is a great way to do things that your iPhone wouldn't be able to do by default. So let me explain. Basically, you could create your own if this, then that actions. And it is a pretty difficult process if you have no clue anything about if this, then that, or you know anything to do with programming or anything like that. It could be a little bit difficult to get the hang of. But if you click plus right there and start a new shortcut, you can see you have all types of things you could start from. However, I would recommend you just go into the gallery and search around for some shortcuts in here. Now, I did also make a video on creating your first shortcut. So if you want to see that, I went through a very in-depth process of creating your own shortcut from scratch. I've also made multiple videos on the best shortcuts available. And these shortcuts are going to be things like being able to download videos from Twitter, being able to download videos from Instagram, being able to download YouTube videos, the ability to convert photos into a GIF, the ability to see what photo was taken on this day last year. And if we go into the gallery, you can see there's tons of things right here. There's home ETA, which shares how long it will take for you to get home. So if somebody texts you asking when, when are you going to be home, you can simply tap on this and it will send it to them. And there's really way too much to talk about in this video about Siri shortcuts. So I would definitely recommend if that sounds at all interesting to you to check out my full video that I did on Siri shortcuts. I actually made multiple full videos on that. So I will link the playlist to Siri shortcuts down in the description below. The next thing you guys should do is go into settings, go to emergency SOS, and you want to turn on call with side button. Now this is something that I hope you guys never have to use, but basically what this does is if you tap the side button five times rapidly, it will call emergency services and they will know where you're at based on the location of your iPhone. Now, I'd recommend that because you never know when you could be in trouble. Now, I would also set up the emergency contacts as well. So if you go and tap on that, you will need to create a medical ID if you haven't done so already. And then you will need to go all the way down to the bottom where you see add emergency contact, tap on that and you want to add in the contact that you want to be notified when you're in danger. Now, again, I hope none of you guys have to use that, but it is an important feature that could potentially save your life. Now, the final thing you guys should do with your brand new iPhone 11 is consider purchasing both more iCloud storage and Apple Care Plus. Now, starting off with iCloud storage, you are going to be backing up your phone to iCloud a lot. So if you go into your iCloud right here, they go to iCloud right here, manage storage. You could click on change storage plan to upgrade your storage right here. So starting at only a dollar a month, for 50 gigabytes is definitely something you guys should consider doing because five gigabytes goes like super fast. So you don't have to have much, especially when it comes to photos and backups. It doesn't take much to reach that five gigabyte limit. So I would definitely recommend buying at least the 50 gigabyte tier of iCloud storage. Now, also, if you go all the way back to settings, you will see right there, it says add Apple Care Plus coverage. If you tap on that, it will take you to the prompt to actually purchase Apple Care Plus. And this is basically just to give you two years of technical support and hardware protection. Now, 
does it protect you from water damage? So that's definitely something to keep in mind. But if you did want to do so, you could do it right here. And I think it's smart for a lot of people who may be pretty careless when it comes to dealing with their iPhone. That is a good way to protect your investment. So there you have it, guys. Those are the first 13 things you guys should do when getting your brand new iPhone 11. Let me know down in a comment below which iPhone 11 you got. And also if any of these tips helped you out, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and also subscribe for a lot more iPhone 11 videos coming in the future. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you soon.